<laughs> oh, I dunked my earlier. Evangelist, uh, option to hit me. Okay. You know. All right. All right. God bless. Thank you. God bless, man. Okay. Um, as it was stated earlier, um, we will be doing the 15 principles for effective witness in uh, part one and two. And this teaching will be coming from Dr. Monroe, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. And um, videos were sent out to those that have been participating in TLA. And um, for today, we would just like to pretty much uh, go over the teachings of uh, Dr. Monroe. And we would just like to expound on what we have heard from the videos. Um, Sister John, would you think that, well, no, we, we just want to go by uh, what we have sent out. Um, Evangelist, did you get the video? Yes, I did. Dick. I got it. I saw it and um, oh, I you. went to the second um, part of it because I thought we were going to go over the whole 15. So he only stopped at... Um, I think he stopped at either nine and 10. So when I watched the second video, he doesn't do, he doesn't continue. So there's a third video. Okay. Yeah, there's a third video that I was trying to find um, him finishing the 15 principles. So I wasn't able to find it because I was getting tired. I needed to um, lay it down for the night. Uh -huh. But there is a third video that you have to find um, him finishing the 15 principle because on the second one, he doesn't get into them either. Oh, okay. he doesn't. So on the, no. first, on the first video, he just mentioned 10 of them. Right. Yes. And so you're saying, Evangelist, there's a third? Part. Yep, there's a, there's a third part, Deke. Um, you have to find him finishing up the uh, rest of the 15 principles. Okay. All right, then. Well, you know what we can do? We can just talk about the 10 um, yeah, parts about. that he yeah. had mentioned in the first uh, the first video. Amen. And um, um, what did Amen. you think? Um, actually, what was, what, for anyone that's on now, what was the, um, what stood out to you in the videos that made you go, hmm? <laughs> It was so much stuff, Deke, that yeah. Dr. Miles Monroe said that made me go, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, for, for me, it was different. He, he brought out some points that I'd never heard before. Yeah. And, um, it, it made me the same way, like, hmm. But the teachings were, um, after he after he broke down his introduction and then he got into those um he got into those um those 10 um 10 points that you can use to be effective as you witness um there was one thing he said to me and maybe we could just jump around a little bit was um Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. I had it written down. It's right here. Um, God's original plan was not to make Christians, but to create mm -hmm. yes. Um God did not, he did not want religion. religion. He wanted a kingdom. Yes, yes. In, 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 in my mindset, you know how we were taught? Oh, no, wait a minute. It was, um, um that was a good start. But what he said was, you know how we were taught to, and, and I was kind of nervous on saying this, but you know how when we first got saved and we were taught that, you know, our, our destination is in heaven? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then he mentioned how, you know, that, that may being taught then as far as us going to heaven. And then he mentioned how, there was nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible that said that. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was already here on earth. Yes. <laughs> that thing right there, oh my God. If that thing it, right there just had me like, oh, I had to really sit and think about that. Yeah. But if you really look into it, remember, you know, then Jesus came 
um, he was preaching the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. But then remember, if you go into Revelation, you will see when Jesus comes yes. to take the church, they're going to right. stay there for a thousand years and it's going to come back and re 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 his kingdom is on earth. Right. It is. Yes. Right. It's on earth. Now, now, let me ask, so, since we, it's just, it's just earth. us, let's, let's, um, let's, yeah. let's get into something here. Um, um, he had said, he, he, I didn't write down what he said, but he had mentioned how, um, in Revelation, he had mentioned how, um, there will be a new there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing, it kind of threw me. I, I'm not going to tell no story. It threw me when um, no, in my mind, it threw me how you know we were taught how you know those that passed the passed along that passed already, that they will be lifted when 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 Jesus Christ comes. Yep. Now we're being lifted. What is that? Are they going to be lifted on the, the new earth? Are you talking about the rapture? Is that what I'm talking about? It's I, I could like be... you're talking about the rapture when the dead in Christ shall rise first. Is that what okay. you're saying? All right, yes. When, when, yeah. when the Bible said, I think it's the... Uh, you're going to make me grab that. I don't remember. In Hebrews, it said when the, 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 the trump of God shall be sown and the dead in Christ shall rise first and they that, that are here, they that remain and are, and are alive, and it shall be caught up to be with him in the air. So when Jesus comes, he's going to come um, the first time. That's a rapture. He's not going to come. He's going to sin. Right. He, the dead in Christ is going to rise up. Those who are right. dead and buried in the Christians right. are right. going to rise up and meet him in the air. And then we, those who are alive now, will be caught up. And yeah. then now they're going to reign with him for a certain period of time. The second coming. Is yeah. when he's gonna to come to pass judgment. Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, yes, and he's gonna and when they when they're gonna um judgment on the devil and yeah. cast him in the lake of fire and all of that. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes. Right. All right. So the Bible talks. Say, have it here, Revelation twenty-one, and uh, and, and said, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Right. The first, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Right. So it, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. But this is the kingdom of God. The new earth is is the kingdom of uh, Jesus is going to reign, and in yeah. the, the new earth. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. I see it now. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Because even when they read Peter, Peter said, "Um, this this this, this old earth is going to burn up. The earth is going to burn up. Right. It's yep. going to burn up. We're going to. It's going to have a new a new earth, and that's where Jesus' yes. kingdom will be. Right. Okay. All right. All right. It was just the way he presented it, and it was so. It was fresh to me. It was like, whoa. Because you, I, I, you know, you you used to. But then maybe that's that's right. not rigid, not researching right. hard enough. To, you know I what I'm saying? You have to word. really dig. Yeah. yeah, I love what you said, researching. You know what I do? So whenever I'm listening to a message, I get my Bible. Because remember in Acts, with the Berean people, when they would listen to the apostles preaching, they would find out in the scripture if what they're saying is true. That's so this is what we need to do. And apostle always encourage us to do. You know, we need to. Amen. Right. Church, and sometimes you know those that we believe that are all singing, the old time singing. Um, okay. I, I, I want to go to heaven and rest, you know. But um, those some my home is in heaven, just waiting for. But if you get into the Bible, because sometimes they misconstrue the scripture. Yeah. You know? They put it in their own oh. understanding. Yes. Their Amen. Own. So we, that is our job. We have to make sure we go into it. They don't know where to find it. Just Google. That's right. Ooh, Amen. Yeah, and you'll find it. That's but you right. gotta Amen. make sure and that whatever that is being taught to, even what I am teaching, what Deek is teaching, you go in the Bible yourself and make sure right. that we're not telling you stuff that is not Nothing clear. Different. You know? Amen. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Amen. Learn that a um, long time ago. How do how do how do how do you guys feel when um Dr. Miles Monroe had mentioned um, sinners are not your enemies. They are your <laughs> brothers and sisters that's out of the family. 
<laughs> How did you guys feel about that? That was something that it made me like, you know, that's true. Uh-huh. You, know, like, um, you know, Deke, hi, everybody. Good morning again. This is Pastor Cindy. You know, when it did stand out, when he talked about the sinners, and he said that Christ came back and he treated them very kind. Yes. So look at how we treat people because of them being on drugs or why are you out here, you know what I mean, stealing? Or why are you out here, you know what I mean, having sex with this one and that one and that one? But see, God came back for all of that. That's why, you know, we don't see it as the sinner. And he said the sinner's prayer that we should do because they are the ones that are hurting. We don't see the hurt. So, you know, to see them on the street corners with a drunken minded with alcohol, prostitution, you know what I mean? He told us, he said, I came back for the sinners. So we have to love them as our sisters and our brothers because they still are in Christ. So that's well, to me, you know, that we have to win this fight to save their souls for us that knows Christ. So I thought that when I heard that, it, it like it just blew my mind because I'm always in the midst of this anyway. Where I'm on the street corners, where when people don't even know that when I'm out and about, that I'm out here talking to those in the drug areas. You know what I mean? Those that are out there, you know, that are homeless. I'm in those areas already out there on a mission for God. It, it, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, but we cannot put people down because of what they look like and what they do. We have to be very careful with that. Because so he still will be judged for that because he did. He came back for the sinners. That's 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 true, um, Pastor Cindy. Um, but there was a there was a uh, distinctive way on how Dr. Monroe had mentioned what you're doing, you know. Um we 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 are to take it a step further, take it a step deeper. Um and you- we we are not to even mention who we are, and that's true. That you is know true. What I'm saying? We we can't come at them and say, um, no. you know, we're a child of God, and what you're doing is sin. We can't that's because right. you got to think about it. We wasn't always we wasn't always serving the Lord, whatever yes, yes. whatever capacity that we may have been prior to us. Um, 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 knowing of God and, and now living our life towards um, 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 as holy as we can, you know. Um, yes. We have to always see it like we always have to what what I got from his teaching in regards to that, that point was the fact that um, we, we, we aren't no better than no, I'll tell you what, what got me was when you mentioned it earlier. You said um, um, when Jesus came, and he mentioned this in his teachings. He said when Jesus came, uh-huh. he preached. He preached hell to those that right. know that thought they knew they were going to heaven. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. and we as we as believers, some, not all of us, some may uh-huh. think that we're on the path of 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 being with Jesus when that time comes. Yeah, now, we, we still have a we still have a long way to go. No matter what title we may have, no yeah. matter what yeah. position that we may have, we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Um and we cannot we cannot forget those um that just don't know. Now um Ooh. Dr. Monroe had said something where it, it made uh, it made perfect sense. Them folks don't want to know. And I, and they don't want to know. And you're right. So what I'm saying as far as my point, which I should have probably made it a little bit clearer, that when I'm out there, I'm not letting them know who I am in Christ. I'm letting them know that I've been there. I'm still there. You know what I mean? So I'm not out there even preaching Christ to them. I'm just letting them know, hey, listen, for those that know me, you know who I was before I uh, who I am now. You know what I mean? So I just want them to know that, hey, I'm still here. I'm still a sinner. You know what I mean? So I'm just to mind you guys and show you that I still love you. No, oh, you're not a sinner, Pastor Cindy. You're not a yeah, sinner. Yeah. <laughs> you're not still a sinner. Come on. Yeah, come on now. Yeah. You're the righteous what, what, of God in Christ Jesus. That's right. What, what I'm, but, what I'm... but we still have to. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Pastor Cindy, finish up. That we're still all sinners, though. You know what I mean? Yes, I am, you know, the righteous, but I have to remember, I can't forget where I came from. Right, but you're not a sinner. But there's sin in me. But you're not a sinner. <laughs> well, but you can't say that for sure. But, but listen, sin, but you're not a sinner. But listen, you I can't am. say that. But listen, <laughs> Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, you can't say that for sure. I can't. But say that. Say that. No, no. Listen, though. You sinners can't. Are, sinners, are not people, sinners are people who are not born that's again because right. that's your nature to sin. You that's have a new nature, Pastor Sinny. You might sin, but that doesn't make you a sinner. No, 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 no. <laughs> see, a person can be kind. A person you can look at to see that, yes, they're serving Christ. But then do you really know deep down in t inside, because you know the enemy can hide, can hide inside of you, or uh, have people thinking, you know what? Yeah, she is righteous. Yes, you know what? She does serve God. You know what I mean? Not saying that that is me. You know what I'm saying? But we have to look at life that way. We have to look at life that way. Because people are like that. I've seen people where they disguise themselves, where they say that they're righteous, or they're saying that they're saved, or they're born again. But deep down inside, there's an ugly side somewhere, you know what I mean? That they still carry that sin yeah. in them. The deliverance comes in. Yes. Yes. Comes in. But once you said Jesus, you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you pass from the kingdom of darkness on right. the kingdom of his dear son. That's what he said. And you are now made in the image of yes. Christ. So yes. there's no sinner in Jesus Christ. So you're not a sinner. You yes. have to identify right. yourself with who Christ is, even though you might sin. It doesn't make you a sinner, Pastor Sin. You That's right. why no, I know an advocate in Jesus Christ that when we sin, we go. Yes. And ask for yes. but that doesn't make you a sinner. You're not a sinner. You are a transformed, yes. regenerated child of God. I am. Born yes. and made over in the image of Christ. Yes. Now, because you want to, I understand you want to identify yourself with the sinners, but you are not a sinner. Jesus Christ went to them. He became, he, you know, he became, Paul said, I became everything to them so I might win them, but it does not make you a sinner. You're right. Amen. You are light. You are not darkness. And you're right. Because you know what? Now, if I were to be a sinner, I can go back to being a sinner. I'm not saying that I believe in God and trust in God. You know what I mean? And what his word says. But you're right. I know that I'm not a sinner. But I have to let them know that when I'm out there with the sinner, you know what I mean? That I've been there. You know what I mean? I know what you're going through. I was a drinker, you know what I mean? Right, right. Sell my body, but I've done things. So I can't make them feel no different, you know what I mean? Of me being around a point that I am righteous, that I am right. righteous. And that's what I'm really trying to get to. All right. So Can I interject is, something really quickly, guys? Good morning. Good morning, hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, first morning. First lady. I'm glad that you're feeling better. Just a little um, bit, but I'm here. <laughs> Okay, good, good. So um I I, I can I I'm so grateful, um, Deke and, and Sister Joan, that you guys are are you know given the you know kind of uh given given the correct biblical answer uh to what Pastor Cindy is saying. And Pastor Cindy, I understand where you're coming from, where you want to make sure that you're humbling yourself and you want to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position where you are um uh, uh, you know, making people feel as if you're righteous and they're not. So I understand where you're coming from, yes. but the, but the, uh, but I would think that, and this is just based on what the Bible says, which of course, you know, we, we follow the word, we follow, <laughs> we follow yes. the word of God. The, 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 the best way I think to approach uh, balancing the humility of knowing that you are say, for example, like I have this uh, I have this way of just letting God know I am nothing without him, that in, in him is who he is the one who empowers me to live holy, to live right. Mm -hmm. I, I make sure that I give God glory yes. and honor for the ability to follow his word, to follow his ways, to follow his will. I make sure that I don't take any credit for myself or take away his glory. So I think the balance with that is when you're talking to people, you can explain that, not, not explain, but you can state that 
you know, when you're in Christ, you're a new creation. The old things are passed away and all things become new. This is where I once was. It's, it's similar to the discussion about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, where they tell the people that who um, have been sober for 17 years, 20 years, they say, you're still an alcoholic. You still have to say, I am, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic, even though you've been clean and sober for X amount of years. The truth of the matter is you don't have to keep declaring that you're an alcoholic if you've been free from that. I don't care if you've been sober one day, you are no longer an alcoholic. You gave that up. That was the old person. That was the old man. So even though you, you can declare and you can state that I am no longer an alcoholic, you can still speak from your experience and relate to people who are still battling with that addiction. If you're no longer a, a drug user, you know, you can relate to people by talking about your experience, but you can talk about it from a free place. You can talk about it from a delivered place. So you can, you, there's a way that you can still minister to people or talk to people about it without seeming holier than thou. And I think that's, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's where your, that's where your stance is, Pastor Cindy. You don't want to appear holier than thou, or you don't want to appear as if you're standing on a soapbox preaching to people who just haven't, haven't gotten to where you are yet. So, you know, the, the Bible says in 1 John um, 1, 8 and, and 9, and I think this is also where you're coming from, Pastor Cindy, is that if we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's true that, yes, while we're still in the flesh, the flesh will never be saved, but our spirit man is renewed every single day, even though in this flesh we will make mistakes just like I can tell a lie, but that doesn't make me a liar. I can, you know, you know, there's certain things that we might do while we're still in the flesh, but that does not make us sinners because we have been saved by grace. We are the righteousness of God. We are a new creation. We belong to him. You know, our righteousness is but filthy rags, but we are the righteousness of God. And that's the difference. So while we don't walk around with the attitude that we're holier than thou, or we're, you know, everybody else is filthy and we're clean, we can still admit that we're imperfect, but we're being perfected. We can talk about how there's a process of sanctification, how as long as we're in this life, we're going to go through a process of, you know, being, uh, being sanctified every single day. Mm -hmm. We have, that's why every single day we have to continue to yeah. walk in that newness of life. We have to continue to walk as those new creatures. So I think that I, I, I believe that's the delicate balance. So Pastor Cindy, I would just change the language, you know, because we understand what you're saying. Just, just change the language so that you're not speaking something over your own life that's not yes. true. Yes. Just for the sake of making right. someone else feel uh, better about themselves. We don't have to put ourselves down to make someone else feel better. Yes. There's a way that we can still talk about how, what God has done for us and talk about where we came from at the same time. You get what I'm saying? Because yes. you have a story too. Like, Pastor, like your story, I think a lot of people don't realize how much of a testimony you have. And so I would keep sharing that, but share it from a healed and whole place. Share it as Pastor Cindy, you know, share it as, you know, as, as the person who's now like, God got me all together. You know, he got me together all the way, you know, and I'm still going through the process, but yeah. just don't call yourself sinner no more. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Hey, I have here with Charles, cause I'm at his house. He has a question to ask you. Good morning, um, everybody. Uh, Hi, Charles. How you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, Daryl. Good to see your voice. How are you? How are you, man? Bless, bless. That's what's happening. Bless Good you. to hear from you. Yes, same for all of you. Um, mm -hmm. getting back to um, what you said about um, saying that you're an addict because you're you're um you're cleaning yourself up do you ever go is it um sinful for us to put ourselves as a sin um by saying that we are recovering addicts or we uh yeah i don't call myself a recovering addict no more because i went through a process um and i know i'm not a, an addict but i was in a rec i was a recovering addict and sometimes I go back to saying I'm a recovering addict because whether it's a beer, a smoke, or a sip, a dip, a dap, 
You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I, 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 I have to go back and say, uh, I'm a recovering. You you went out for a second, Brother Charles. You, you, you were fit. Um, can you repeat the last thing that you said? Um, do I put classify? I'm not really classify myself. Like I said, I don't call myself a recovering addict no more. Hold on one second. Hold on. Okay. What would you think, First Lady? Would he, he would should he or an addict? Because we're clean now. Um, mm -hmm. That we are recovering at. Because, like I said, I, I have to catch myself from time to time going through a process where I want to sometimes come, the notion comes across my mind. The notion comes across my mind to pick up a beer because it's on a hot day and I'm going home, you know? And I, I, I had a problem with uh, substances, but I have to classify, I have to say to myself sometimes, I'm a recovering addict, or I, I'll use that to help somebody out that's going through what I went through. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. My response to that, the, well, the first question is, uh, you know, what if make sure I understand. You're asking, should you still refer to yourself as, even though you don't say I'm an addict, should you at least say I'm a recovering addict so that it can help people that you might encounter or that you're talking to? Yes. I think that language, this is what I believe. Language matters. Language is important. We know that the Bible, we know what the Bible says, just taking it straight to the Bible first. You know, death and life, they're in the power of the tongue. You know, we, the, there's power in our words. So we know that. And I know that God gives grace to us, to a, um, not to a certain degree, but, you know, God gives grace, period. He does give grace to us. But there are certain things that there are, just like there are natural laws, like what goes up must come down. <laughs> there are yeah. spiritual laws too. And one of the spiritual laws is that, you know, our words have power. And so even though it might not be God saying, I'm just going to allow your words to come back to haunt you or come back to, you know, uh, you just revisit you in a way that just is not favorable to you. You get what I'm saying? It, not, those things just will nat will, will happen just like you know, I get. I think it's safe to say that those things will just naturally happen. They're the natural consequences of our words. Um, now, that does not mean that if you say I'm an addict because you're following the rules of AA or NA, or you know, if or you say I'm a recovering addict, um, that that anything will you know you'll will relapse or you'll go back into that life. I'm not saying that. I think that because words have power, I would be extra cautious. And this is just my personal, um, you know, my own personal prep. I would be extra cautious about using words that put a label back on me that I know I've been freed from. Right. And because I understand the power of my words, I'm going to switch that language because just because I was a prostitute back in the day, I'm not going to go around saying I'm a prostitute right. just because I, you know, you used to, you know, smoke weed every day back in the day. I'm not going to say I'm a weed head. Um, just because I used to be, you know, abused, uh, you know, I'm not going to walk around and say I'm a victim. That's why I use the word survivor. Amen. You know, so I would personally, and I would, you know, and this is just what I would suggest to you, Charles, because I know you, <laughs> I would change the language and just start to, you know, instead of using the word recovering addict, you know, I, you know, be relatable to people. And I know this is what Apostle will say. I know, him, I, I think I know him a little bit. He would say, you just, just talk to people in, in regular everyday language. Say, you know what? I used to be where you are. Yeah. I used to, you know, I used to, I used to drink every day and every now and then, you know, I, I have this desire, but you know what? That's not me anymore. You know, yeah. talk to people, meet them where they are and, and speak their language, speak their vernacular. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're talking to, like when I'm talking to somebody that's like an 18 year old girl who's coming to be to me to be mentored, I bring out that Bridgeport you know, hood chick talk. I'm, I'm clapping my hands when I'm talking. I get, you know, I start to, you know, talk a little, you know, like that language come back, even though, and then when I'm talking to people on my job, the lawyer language comes out and I start to talk real proper and, you know, the whole nother language comes out. Mm -hmm. So talk to people, you know, know the person that you're talking to and just speak, speak their language. 
but I would be careful about calling yourself a recovering addict because then what you do, if people, especially if it's somebody that's very, you know, if they feel that they're admiring you or they look up to you, they're going to start to develop some of the same uh, language and habits or whatever the case might be. So they'll start just because, you know, you're using the language, they'll say, well, I'm a recovering addict too. But if they hear you talking different, that's going to develop their way of speaking about their experience as well. And they'll no longer look at themselves as an addict, but someone who used to be in that life that used to do that, but no longer is that way, no longer does those things. Even when the desire comes back up, that's not me. Because right. as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to have desires. That's right. right. Look, I could be real transparent and tell y'all some, you know, <laughs> I, I, but it's being recorded. But you know, I'll talk to you, so you know, just just be relatable. Just yeah. talk, talk every day. Do away with all those rules and traditions and and, right. and rule books and policies and procedures. We're in a new time, and people are understanding more now than ever how much yeah. language matters because they don't even call people addicts anymore. I don't think they call them. You know, uh, you know, say if, instead of using addict, there there's certain professional language that they're changing those things because they understand that it has an effect on you when you speak that language over yourself or when people hear you use the, those labels when referring to somebody else. I hope that, does that help? Yes, it does. It does. Because uh, 70, 75%, I usually do that, but every now and then I have to go back, just like you said, I have to talk that language and I, and sometimes I, I drop down to that level and um, on them terms so they can somewhat relate and uh, I try to talk them a little bit in the proper direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause we, you know, we, we don't have to keep labeling ourselves. We can, we can do away with that, you know? And like I said, you know, the Bible, if we know that the Bible says that, you know, death and life is in the power of the tongue, we, we have to look at that across the board and be careful about any language yes. that yeah. we use, um, referring to ourselves, referring to others, or just in, in everyday conversation. Yes. 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 That's Amen. Right. yes. Well, right. that, that definitely helps me out because I, I, I refer to myself as a recovering addict all the time. And that just made so much sense to me now. Yes. So mm. I'm gonna stop. Thank you for that. Amen. Yes. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Mary. That was wonderful. Wonderful explanation. Wonderful yes. example. Glory to God. Thank you. So Thank you. Much. That's glory to God. Thank you. Amen. That's that's like um, apostle coming to me. They wanted me to do a certain ministry because of the fact that where I came from, um, first lady, she did come out so elegant in, her, in your response, um, Brother Charles. But um, I was thinking that also because, you know, <clears throat> I used to be an addict for a long, long, long time. But now, you know, that's that's not even, uh -uh. you know, that's I don't even live that. That's but right. if you was to get me into that area or that environment, and that's so much of me just being out um, in the quote unquote hood you know, I will be able to talk that talk and know what I'm saying. But then at the same time, you know, they will hear, they will hear that there, there's much more than me than just that talk. What you have to do is understand who you are in Christ. You know what I'm saying? You have to Amen. be sturdy in who, yes. who Christ is in your life. Yes. You can go and just like how Jesus went and hung out with the tax collectors and all them other all them other people, he hung out with them and he was cool. He he was there. You know what I'm saying? He was there chilling. But then they knew who Christ was just because of his countenance, just because of who Christ is. They knew who Christ was, even though he was hanging out. Now, like first lady said, when she's at her professional um environment, like even where I am, you know, you have to speak a certain way. You know, you can't okay. speak good. But then at the same time, you know, it's it's like, you know, I come across people that like to drink, you know, and they just see me as because I'm a, a, a brother, of, a man of color, they would think that I would do the same thing. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, now I've never been somebody that, you know, did that as far as on a regular, but because people see me, they may think, or they even may think I smoke. And I could tell her some things. Yeah, you know, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. 
I can show you how to do it, you know, and they'll be surprised, but it's like, you know, that's not me no more. You know, don't, don't, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna tell, oh, I used to be, I used to smoke this and that for 35, 30, 35 years. No, I ain't gonna never say that. I ain't even gonna claim that I used to do it because it's done. You know what I'm saying? But it's in the back of my mind. Now, have I ever had thoughts like that? No, because, you know, you live that life. You learn to live forward. You learn to allow God to be in your life and to lead you in the way that you ought to go. And once you get to that point, you just keep going. You just keep on going, my brother. Just keep on going. And before you know it, you would use that what you have gone through and be able to help someone. That's like um, um, what um, Dr. Monroe, I wish ooh, you got to give up your address. I mean, not your address, but your email address. And I don't know if I have your number but I think I do, man. I'm gonna send you these videos so you can see, and, and it, it would help you also. It would help you in your in your your daily walk. Dr. Monroe had mentioned how um, um, how we are to go to we are to help those that you know that don't know Christ. Um, and and I thought the most profound part of it that. We are to go to people like we're no, like we're normal. I mean, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. How we go to those that don't know Christ. Dr. Monroe was pretty much saying, hey, let's let's be like Christ-like without announcing who we are. Be interested in their in their interests. Understand That's right. what makes them tick. That's right. Be their friend. That's right. Allow them to see us for who okay. we are. Once okay. they become comfortable, then they will start to reveal things that they wouldn't reveal. Mm -hmm. Then we are to let, allow them to know, you know, what has been done for us. But you do that in the gradual sense of the term where it's not forced upon them. It's not either you do it this way or that way. None of that. None of that. We are to be their friends first. Amen. Can I Amen. say something? Sure enough. Go ahead, Sister and, John. Uh, I think this is what you were referring to, which is a great point that you just brought out. He said that salvation is about going out into the world to find our little brother or sister who, who, who are eating pig's food. They yes. get slow, they're yes. privileged, telling them that dad's not mad. Does not matter at you anymore. The father's already paid the bills. Yes. That, that's what he was that's, saying. That, yeah, I that, love that part. I love yeah. that part. Yeah. yeah, that that yeah, because um, uh, you know, that that even when he mentioned about how uh uh Christ is like our big brother and how he came down yeah. and he basically was letting everyone in the, he was letting the world know that he wants to he wants to uh bring us back home. Bring us back home. Bring us yeah. back home. Yes. And, 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 and we as believers, you know, uh, we can do this in, in whatever capacity we may be able to do it in. It could be in a professional level. It could be uh, in a work environment um, situation. Or it could be in a professional level where, you know, you're meeting people that, you know, you pretty much wouldn't meet like every day. But no matter what situation you may be in, we can take that small example of just being their friend. Like he had mentioned, Dr. Moreau had mentioned something about, let's try it when you go, the next time you go to work or wherever you go, try it. Let someone come to you and they start talking to you and you show your interest in them and watch what happens. That happened when I did that. The following day, I went to work. And there was a guy that came and he started speaking about his family. And I I just said, well, you know what? Um, tell me more about your kids. He looked at me like, huh? I said, yeah, dad, let me explain to me about your kids. You know, what, what do they like? What do they don't like? And, you know, um, he began to explain it. And before you knew it, it was, it was a half an hour. He explained about his wife and, and him and his kids and what he has to do. And I said, well, you know what? That's real interesting, you know? And he said, really? And, and it was like, ever since then, he had come to me at one point of the day during the night, well, early morning. 
And he would just begin to talk to me about um, what he wants to do for his family, what he wants to do, um, uh, making sure that they're okay and everything like that. And um, and I, I think I mentioned one time, I, I just said, well, you know what, that's beautiful. I said, that's a beautiful thing. I said, um, I said, well, you know, um, I do nothing without my Lord and Savior. And and he looked at me, he said, you know, I knew, I knew you, I knew you served, I knew you served God. And I was like, how did you know? He said, I just knew it. I just, I just, I felt you. You you would never really, you know, you don't, you never came across, he said, even though you wear the, the cap and the and the matching t-shirts come to work, different colors and everything. And people would, matter of fact, look at you like you from the hood. But you never came across like that. I said, well, that's just what I wear. It's not who I am. You know, it's like people putting on clothes. They like to dress. I like to dress, even though it's third shift. And he just, he, he, he just, he took it upon himself to be friendly. Now I'm still praying on the Lord to ask to, to just, you know, how can I go about um just introducing them to Christ? Because I don't wanna, you know, people could be real fickle when you do that. So I'm, I'm asking the Lord when it would be a good time mm -hmm. to um, introduce him. But he knows this is how I live. He knows like when people come around and they start acting real, you know, vulgar with their language or whatever, he noticed how I kind of cringe or I walk away and then I'll come back and do my work. And, and or he had noticed where if there's a lot of confusion, you know, he would he would kind of I would just, you know, just just stay away and I said well for me man it's just it's it's it bothers me I didn't get elaborate with that I just said it just bothers me so um the the what what Dr. Miles Monroe was speaking in regards to um um just being able to witness to those that may felt lost that you know not even felt lost um um, actually, what I want to do is ask a few people that I see mother. I see I see mother brooding on. I saw Sister Jessica. May I ask you a question? What did you get from um from the video? Did you get the video? I unfortunately I didn't get the video until like 10 10 30 last night. <laughs> so oh, I didn't even have a chance okay. to um to look at it. I, I mean okay, I no problem. I apologize. I just, you know, I've been going through some stuff, so I really apologize. That's all right. That's all right. That's understandable. <laughs> Mother. Oh, I sent it to her, but it went to Jayla's phone. Yeah, she sent it to Jayla's phone, and Jayla doesn't, Jayla's phone, she doesn't have her phone. <laughs> oh. I think she had Jayla's, Jayla's phone number under my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so, well, we yeah. need to get Joe, we need to get Joe number, so we can send <laughs> that information to you. Okay. All right. Yes. So you can pass that along to Sister Joan in your earliest convenience, and she would definitely send that to you because I think it will be a blessing for everyone. No, I did get it, but I did get it, but I got it late, late, like late last night. It was like it was after ten o'clock. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay, I had fine. texted her, I had texted her and said I I didn't receive it, and um, but that was my fault. I should have texted her earlier because she did tell me about it earlier in the day, but I just been busy. No problem. No problem. We all have, but you know, yeah. at one point in time, get it. I, get a I will look, look at it. I will look right. at it. All right. All right. Um, there was there was something that Dr. Miles Monroe had mentioned, and I just want to bring this question out to each and every one. Um, he he said, "How do you bring people back to God?" He mentioned, "How do you bring people back to God?" That's when he came up with. How many, Sister Joan? There were like 10. There were 10, yeah. 10. They were uh, in the first video. Right, that's in the first video. There were like 10 ways, 10, um, if I can say it like that. Um, the first one he, he, he brought out was don't criticize. Uh -huh. He said, don't criticize. Don't criticize um, what they do, how they look, uh -huh. you know, the way they talk. Uh -huh. Don't criticize. Basically, you know, you can't look at them for what's wrong with them. Uh -huh. You know, um, you you just you 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 can you can mention 
now I'm thinking about what First Lady has said, but and I'm trying to put it in a language where it's maybe Sister Joan, you can help me out. But I'm thinking he he had mentioned now. Uh, uh, you can mention how God, what God has done in their life or in our life. He said, because I read them. No. <laughs> you wrote it down? I thought yeah, I wrote it down. I wrote it like three times. It was so good. He, okay. said, he said, don't look at what's wrong with them. He said, tell them what Christ has already done to, to make their lives better. He right. said, tell them that they're citizens of a kingdom with power and glory and honor mm -hmm. with crowns upon their heads. And they're missing it. They're missing it. <laughs> Now, how should we do, First Lady? What should, what should we do if, if they seem like they're missing what we're saying or what? What God something like that will be saying, yeah. Uh, excuse me, guys, before y'all go into that, um, I, I have to get off, but Charles wanted to know, Dick and Daryl, do you have his email? Because I have to leave. Do I have his email? Yes, or do you want his email? Um, Sorry, y'all, thank you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, um, what I'm gonna do is text my number to your phone and you can give it to him. Okay, all righty. All right, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay, then, thank you guys so much. All right, threw me off. Um, what was what that was, question, Z? Yeah, that question, um, first place. Um, no, wait a minute, Sister Joan had came, she, she had. She had, um, I was saying something and she she clarified some things when we were talking about um, Dr. Miles Monroe, the first of the 10 points that he had emphasized was, the first one was don't criticize. So um, I said, don't, don't look at what's wrong with them. Tell them what God has done for them in their life. Yeah. Now, my question was, hearing what you had said earlier, my question was, um, we can say that, but if they don't receive it, are we just to walk away or, or do we just um, allow them to, do we walk away from, when I say walk away, do we just, you know, don't come back with it or do we, do we come back at another time and just talk? Because basically he was just saying, don't criticize how they look, how they talk, you know, what, what situations they may be in. We are just to allow them to let them know what Christ's done in their life. But I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat confused on the language part. Like how Okay, we... so, you're, so you're asking, like, say, for example, you, you go to, you witness to, them, witness to them, you're not criticizing them, but you're telling them about the things that Christ has done for them. So you, you're yes. giving them all of the the glass half full, <laughs> you right. know, you give them all the positive, all, all the right. positive, but they're not receiving it. Right. They're like, nah, you know, maybe that's, God has done that for you, but God don't speak to me like that, or right. God ain't thinking about me, or I, my prayers don't get answered, kind of like that kind of response. Kind of like that response. Now, that's a good question, because I've gotten that quite, I've gotten that more often than I would, you know, I, I would, I would love that, love it if nobody ever responded to me like that. But I do hear that often, unfortunately, right. because right. people do have this hopelessness. Mm -hmm. right. like, a, like a prime example, and I think, oh my goodness, this is a good question. When I was in Ohio at the human trafficking um, shelter, mm -hmm. I, I, I stayed with those women for the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know that I was a human trafficking survivor. They didn't know any of my story. All the, They thought I was there as a guest and that I just knew the person who was running the facility. They just figured I was just there. Mm -hmm. And the last day we were all sitting around eating and we just started to have a conversation and I started to open up because I wanted to hear their story. So I never wanted to interject my story in the conversations that happened that weekend. I never wanted to overshadow them. I wanted to hear their stories of survival. And so I purposely just kind of fell back. I didn't want them to know that I was a lawyer. I didn't want them to know that I had written any books. All, all they knew was just I was there. And so the last day we're sitting around eating and somebody asked me, so what do you do? And I was like, well, <laughs> I didn't just go right into the end point. I started to tell them my journey. Cause I'm like, look, what you see here today is not what always was. And I started to share with them what Christ has done. And so anyway, at the end of that, 
I started to speak hope into the women that were listening. Now, some of them were like sitting with tears in their eyes. Some of them were full on bawling, crying. And one young lady, hard looking chick, tatted up, braids, you know, lashes, you know, just typical, you know, ghetto fabulous. Right. But she's looking at me with this look like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> right, right. And so I, I, I really, so I was like, you know, how does, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know your thoughts. And so she was like, man, you know, God don't answer my prayers. Um, you know, he, you know, yeah, that happened for you, but stuff like that never happens to me. Right. Like I always have all this negative stuff happen to me. So my response to her was to point out about where she is now. I'm like, but you've been rescued out of that. Look where you are. Like you're in this beautiful place. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. You don't got to worry about what you're going to wear, whether you're going to, where you're going to lay your head. You're in a safe place now. This is an answer prayer. If you pray for God to rescue you, if that was one of your prayers, God does hear you. He did send you an answer. He did give you a place to live. He did get you out of that situation. You, you're running a business now. You have a lash business. You know, that's why she had lashes. You know, she was lashed up. I said, you have your own lash business. You have your own cosmetics uh, company. And you, because they, that's one of the things that they did there. They not only bring the women in, but they empower them and say, if you're going to stay here for free, you got to either open, start your own business or go to school. Right. And so she started her business of being a cosmetologist and having a, you know, a lash company. And I started to point out all the positive things that she couldn't see in herself. And, at, and, and I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. She didn't receive it. She, I'm, point, I'm telling her what she's got, like what's right was apparent, was, was obvious to everybody sitting around the table and everybody was starting to get, you can, you know, people shuffling, you kind of, you know, getting agitated, like, come on chick, you ruined it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And so we started to, we just pull everything. We shut me and the lady that runs it, Mar Dr. Marlene, we, we shut everything down and we all started to just minister to her, but we didn't cater to her, her feelings. Right. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't um, pet, give her a pity party and just like, oh, you know, it's going to be all right. We was like, look, mm -hmm. tell us what, what, what are some of the things you prayed? We put the onus back on her. We said, right. what are some of the things you prayed about? What are some of the things that you see in your life now that's different from where you were before? Right. What made you start your, your business? And so we started to have her speak and regurgitate, like instead of me telling her what God has done, we forced her to speak those things that God has done by asking her questions. And so the, oh my goodness, this is so good. I'm yeah. gonna end with this because I can keep going. But keep I think going. one of the key, one of the best things we can do is ask probing questions to people. Instead of talking to them, Ask them questions like deep, like you did on your job when you started the conversation with the guy, with the coworker, asking him questions kind of took him like it threw him for a loop. And he was it like, did. oh, wait a minute. But then yeah. he just went on and on and on. Start telling you more than what you even asked him. You right. ask him about his kids. He's telling you about his wife, what he want to do right. for them and all of that right. stuff. Right. Start asking questions to people. And that, uh, that's a good way to avoid getting into arguments with people. If somebody mm -hmm. says something that we don't agree with, something that's not biblical, something that, you know, especially with these um, uh, people that are like Hebrew Israelites and people that are you know, five percenters and all of these different people or Muslim yeah. that, you know, that want to try to, you know, they want to convince us like, you know, y'all realize what y'all believe. Don't get into arguments. Ask questions. Like, well, tell me, you know, how did you start to believe that? You know, or tell me. So anyway, that's a sidebar. But when it comes to people that, don't receive what you're saying start asking them questions and right. let them do the talking yeah right. and the more they talk they will convince themselves either they will convince themselves or they will be so conflicted that they'll walk away they don't they, don't, they won't really know what to do they, they <laughs> but it'll sink in right. one 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 plants one waters god gives increase so even if we don't feel as if we've been effective in that one conversation leave it at that don't argue don't press ask the questions and then, you know, if they still kind of resistant, leave it alone. Let somebody else come back and say the same thing and then let the light bulb go off of them. Because, you know, just like us parents, we know that we can tell our children the same thing for 25 years. Right. And then they turn 26 and so, somebody say the same thing. And all of a sudden, oh, my goodness, life changing conversation. Like, chick, I've been telling you this for years. For 100 but, years. Y'all get what I'm saying. So yeah, 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 yeah. one plants, one waters, let God give the increase. Got we you. and and. And, and don't think about the language or don't think about the, in this situation, 
it's not a situation where we, we shake the dust up our feet and all that's for people who are already you know who think they know it all who, who are believers that don't want to receive what you got to say and they they're 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 um self-righteous so to speak that's that's for those kind of people and 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 we're not going to think about it in terms of casting our pearls before swine they're worth our time they're worth our conversation that this is a different kind of situation this is a different scenario these are th these are people who we're trying to witness to but if they don't receive it don't press let you know let it go and let somebody else water that seed that you just planted amen amen, amen. all right i got i got that i got you on that first lady that's i just needed a clarification on it sometimes because i get into like you said i get into situations like that also um i i thank god for for giving me more patience because i used to be that type of person where if i'm being challenged you know, I get into uh, not confront. I get into heated discussions. You know, and and I remember Apostle a long time ago when I first was getting to know him. Um, he had mentioned. He said, "You don't got to do that. You don't got to do that. Just be just be sure in 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 what you're speaking. Just learn the truth. Get the truth. And once you speak it, then you don't have to argue. And you know, now I'm at the point where I don't even say nothing." You know, I listen, but I don't say nothing. And then, you know, listen to the video. And Dr. Miles Monroe said, you, you know, you say one word. Okay. <laughs> he says, okay, you hear him talk. You'll say something, you hear him talk. And, you know, you know it's not, it's not truth. It's not, you know, of God. You just say, okay. You know, you don't get into no argument, no discussion with him. But I, I it's good to hear, um, it's good to hear from um uh, senior leadership in that regard, so you would know that you know you're on the, the right path of, of how to deal with situations such as that. Um, Sister Joan, you want to uh, do three, three, two, three, and four, two. please? Okay, okay, D. Um, number two, and it says, make friends before converts. And I wrote down a little bit of what he was saying, he said, we are called to love we must approach people to become friends with them. And he said, if you want someone to listen to you, they have to like you. If you offend people, they won't listen to you. You know, and so many times, you know, instead of coming from a, a, a place of showing love, you know, we, we sometimes try to like to, to push on our beliefs on people, not realizing that, a, that first, you know, we should be we should be able to, to become friendly with them, make friends, then they will be able, they, they will be open to what we have to say in the future. You know, there's so many times, even, <clears throat> even in, you know, as young Christians, baby Christians, you make so many mistakes yes. until, yes. until you get to a, a, a knowledge of yes. what the appropriate thing is. But you know, there are many times when we go, we used to go um, witnessing in Jamaica a lot. And, you know, we, the first thing is that we're saying, trying to, to, to approach them with this religion thing when that's that they don't want to hear that. Right. You know, they don't want to hear that it comes into a big debate now, you know, which totally, totally defeat the purpose. Right. So I agree with him when he said, make friends before converts and and to show love, because remember, we are called to love. All Amen. right, any questions? Did any anyone questions? else go that, hold on, hold on, Sister Joan. Anyone else that um, saw the video, do they have anything to add to what Sister Joan had mentioned? How, what, what, what was said? Um, I thought, okay. All right. Okay, Sister Joan. The third point was to be interested in what they are interested in. I think, I think that you already shared on that part because he was saying that everybody is interested in themselves. To get people right. to be friends is to talk about their interests. Right. And that's so true. You know, sometimes people don't want to hear about, about other people's problem. They want their business, their their problem to be at focus, which is so true. Right, it is. Yeah, it is. He had, um, Dr. Monroe had said something 
that was, uh, I don't want to give it away, but he had said something in regards to that. Uh, we may be able to get to it. And that was so true. And he said, well, you know what? I'm going to say it. He said, he said that it was a basic human need uh -huh. that people, he said that was, it was a basic human need that people wants to feel important. Uh -huh. And when I thought about that, I'm like, oh, you know, right? That's, that's, that's true. People want to feel important, especially when you're talking to them. They don't want to, especially if you're talking to them, they don't want to hear what you got to say. They want to be able to speak about what's going on with them. And if you're trying to convince them, then that just shuts them down pretty much. Um, yes. That's why I, I, I you know, I, it, speaking to the, um, to the gentleman at, at my job and, and looking at the video, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of like right there. But, you know, I, I just think I, you know, I just think he was more open to allowing me to, to, to speak to him than other times because, you know, a lot of times people, you know, they don't, they, you know, and it, it's not discouraging, but as you said, Sister Joan, when you're young and, and, and in this life, you know, you go, you make mistakes and you allow your emotions to get in the way and, you know, it's, it's not, but you learn, you learn, you learn. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Deacon uh, uh, Daryl. Uh, there you go. There she is. <laughs> Sister Joe. <laughs> I, I just, I, I just want to say that we need to have compassion mm -hmm. uh, 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 for others because we have to remember that uh, at one time we were the old man. Mm -hmm. the, the old man, that was us. Mm -hmm. But now we are a new creation in Christ. So I think when uh, Pastor Mary was uh, talking about when she was visiting the ladies, I think she showed compassion by listening to their stories first. Mm -hmm. And that at the end revealing, you know, her story, it showed the new person that uh, the change that God had made in her life. Mm -hmm. But we have to have compassion for, for others and, um, by having compassion for them, uh, we are showing love and, and friendship because right. uh, Jesus never argued with anybody. You know, he, he told them the truth and he just left. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Mother. Thank yeah. you so much. All right, Sister Joan. Yeah, I think too that um, what people need is to really feel that we really care about them. You know, when we when people feel that you you care or I care about them, they will be more trusting and will open up more. But if I feel that you don't care about me, I'm not gonna talk to you. That's right. You know, I'm not, and if I feel like you're ignoring me, I'm I'm not gonna open up to you. That's right. You know, so sometimes we have to we have to put ourselves in other people's places. That's right. And then uh, we can understand where they're coming from. That's right. That's right. That's, what, that's, that's, what, that's one of the things that helped me to learn how to deal with people, how to associate with people. And then I would go back and think how I was before. That's right. You know, you, right. Don't, you don't want to be judgmental. That's right. You know. That's right. That sounds like number four. Be genuine in what interests them. Yes. Be genuine. Yes. Like, like exude that emotion where they can feel that you're really, really genuine in wanting to know more about them. Yes. Being sincere. Yes. Sincere. When, when when speaking back, if they answer if they ask your question, or maybe just giving them an answer where it's 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 easy to it's easy giving them an answer that making them feel at ease. They never want to feel like tense up or anything like that. Oh. Um, like you said, Sister Joan, like now I've realized that even, you know, it, it's much more than how I feel. It's much more than and then what I would feel. I have to really, I've really been trying to not allow what I feel 
get in the way of someone else's and, and what's important to them, you know? Um, because that's another thing, that's another way of showing that you care. Um, even though you may be feeling some type of way, you know, you always have to not say put on ears, but really, really be sincere in, in um, understanding that person, un putting yourself in their place and maybe possibly being there for them so that they may hear something from you that they never, I wouldn't say never heard before, but never would have thought about. Right. So that's that's another thing that we have most definitely have to be genuine in, in um, knowing what interests them. That's why he was saying to help the person expose their own heart. Yes. Right. You yes. help them to expose to talk. You listen and let them talk. Right. Yeah, I like that. Um, and you know, when you ask questions, that that allows you to be able to be even genuinely interested and and sound sincere, even when it's a subject matter that you don't necessarily understand. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people might tell us stuff and we don't know how to respond. Right. Because uh, we don't know what it's like or whatever the case might be. We've never been through that. But I think that's the key. That's the key is understanding sympathy and empathy mm -hmm. and the difference between the two. You know, when you're sympathetic, you tell them, you know what? I know exactly what you're going through. I went through this and I can relate to you. And that brings them, it brings you even closer because you share a common experience. But right. when you're empathetic, you might not have gone through what they went through, but you can try to understand what they're going through like somebody else might not have ever went to prison but if they're talking to somebody who's lived that life and have been through that experience they can at least start to understand their experience and say you know what so what was it like what were some of the issues that what were some of the what were some of the things that you saw in there that you would want to change or that you wouldn't want the next person to go through you know there's certain right. questions that we can ask that can foster the conversation even if we know nothing about that's what right. that's like that's right so that's a suggestion amen that's right. Oh man, amen. It's, it's funny you said that, first lady, because you know people look at me and they can say, "Oh, oh, I know you spent some time." What? Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they they would look at me and they say, "Oh man, I know you. You know what's up. You know, you you know how it is." What? <laughs> <laughs> look, <laughs> look. Don't think. I, I look, man. I know not to be there. I you. I, <laughs> no, I've never been there. I never planned on it. There may have been a couple of times when I was close, but you know, with no cigar. But I could never, I would have never, I would I could never imagine what it would be like. You know, and, and, and just to be with somebody or to know people that have and, and to be real about it and to speak on it, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and just just being just understand it. You can never understand it unless someone that been there can tell me because um, they, they've they gone through some things where I've never gone through. Just like I could tell them some things that I've done and they've never done it. And they can look at me like, what? I'm like, yeah. You know, so yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can definitely understand that. I can definitely understand that. Um, I like this one, Sister Joan. I don't know how you feel. Or anybody else oh, that's on? I laugh so much. <laughs> which which one? Number five. Number five. Yes. <laughs> Give your best first impression. Smile. Smile. <laughs> Who smiles on a regular? I do. Oh yes, you do. Always happy. <laughs> I do. I love to smile because a smile is so powerful. Mm -hmm. You never know what someone is going through. You know what I mean? And they could have been around people that never smiled or they could have grew up in an environment where they never saw their mother smile, their father smile. Mm -hmm. So a power of smile can be very, very powerful. So when you smile, it changes people. You know what I mean? And Dr. Right. Moreau said a smile makes a light spirit. That's so right. when you smile at a person, their spirit can be so heavy. But when you smile at them, their spirit becomes light. Mm -hmm. 
So I love, love, love to smile because when people look at you, you know, and they said, what are you smiling about? <laughs> and that's the door that's yeah. being opened. And you can say, you know what? This is the reason why I smile. Jesus is the reason why I smile because I used to walk around and I never would smile. Uh -huh. But yeah. when I allow Jesus Christ into my life, you know what I'm saying? He's given me so much joy. Right. Now I have a reason to smile. Yeah. So this was my favorite one. My favorite one. Amen. Yeah, I, I can I can be at work, Evangelist. I can be at work and I'm walking around and um, I'm going different areas. And my supervisor, um, he's from he's from um, Ghana. And um, he always asks me though, he said, D, why are you smiling? <laughs> and, and, I, <laughs> and I just be walking by and just doing my thing. And and you're so right when you said that, you know. But you know, he he's he's so busy, but he'll catch me and he'll walk by and I said, Man, you know, you know why I'm smiling. Yeah. He'll just look at me and nod his head because he's a believer also. But he said, Man, you smile too much. I said, No, I don't smile enough, man. You know, and it's a beautiful thing, man, because people will look at you and they'll wonder why you're smiling. But I don't know, man. I think men. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say it. Men I have a I have a quick testimony, Deke. When I was working at Middlesex, when I was working at Middlesex Hospital, and one of the doctors, he was one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Jeffy Bernstein, and I would clean the ED, and all I do would just I would just smile, laugh, joke. So yeah. one day in the ED, he turns around to me, and he said you're always smiling and got so much joy. He said, why? And I said, because of Jesus. Now he's a doctor and he's a Jew. And he turned around doing writing on his clipboard. He turns around Deke again and he said, Jesus? I said, yes, Jesus. He turns back, continue writing, turns around again and look back and said, Jesus? said yes <laughs> Jesus man come on you better say that name because <laughs> you, because they, people I don't know people my thing is and, and I, I don't know if I should say if I'm amazed about it but you know what how we say we say it in our sleep sometimes there's power in the name of Jesus yes when we say that out in the world and the people, and, and for the most part, some of the people they really, really look at you and 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 and, and be astonished that you would speak that word. It's like you can't, you you. It's like you are like you're forbidden to speak that word. Yes. But when we when you're when you're so confident and when you're so loving and when you just love that name and you speak it, you know you walk around and say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, I get that from your grandmother, my grandmother walking around saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I, I, I find myself doing that even at work because, you know, it's stressful sometimes. And I'm just like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you know, them folks, them folks sometimes, man, they scatter. They scatter like roaches when you turn on the light. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So what I loved about that though, Deke, is because he was a doctor and yeah. here I am a housekeeper yeah. and I'm cleaning the ED with joy. I'm cleaning the ED with a smile on my yeah. face yeah. talking about Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. Can I share something? Oh, go about it. Mother brother. Uh, go ahead, brother. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I just I just want to say uh, um, the ushers since the pandemic we have not been uh, organized like you know on our posts and as a group however that's one of the first instructions I gave the ushers was to uh, uh, give everybody a beautiful smile that came through the door Amen. and to say welcome and to say welcome Amen. welcome to try out Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I, well, Mother, I've been trying to have your back, you know, since we've been um, back in church. I've been trying to have your back there. Um, when we fully, when we fully able to 
not have any masks, I know you're going to have your post, but, you know, that's a beautiful thing that, you know, everyone that's by the door, they can just smile and say, welcome to Triumph. Come on. We're waiting for you, mother. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm in the process of making up a new schedule. So, All right. so uh, I'll, I'll be. <laughs> I'll All right, be... now. <laughs> but you, you have you have been on your post every Sunday, so uh, I I won't hold you down to a particular Sunday. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, can, I, can I say something before you move on, Lee? Sure. Yes. So we're looking at point five, right? The one yes. smile. Yes. And he said, like, you know, some people look like they were they are mad at the world as if they were baptized in lemon juice three times. Ooh, yes, he did. Huh? <laughs> so I laughed because it brought me back to when I was younger. And I never used to smile. And because I really don't know what I was so depressed growing up and I never used to smile. And then, you know, my mother was always cursed and said, You look like you you look as if your 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 face look as if the rain is gonna fall. Why, and your sister always have a pleasant countenance. Look at you and blog, you look like old people and stuff like that. So I never smile. And when I became a Christian, now people would say, um, are you okay? What's wrong with you? Because I always tell where to frown. And then I said, but nothing is wrong because in my heart, I'm excited and I'm joyful, but it's not showing on my face. So I used to walk with a mirror. I used to walk with this mirror in my in my purse. I would take it out at times and look at my face and try to smile. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Practicing the smile? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I used to walk in the mirror and right. I take it out at times and look. And then I would try to smile. Because I said, what why are, they said I, I look at like something's wrong with me. Nothing is wrong with me. So I was just gonna practice smiling. But then one day at work, I smiled, and the person said, wow, your, your smile light up this old room. You have a million dollar smile. And from then on, I started to smile. That's it. I that's smiled. probably <laughs> That's probably all Amen. you need to hear. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's great. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Can I share something really quick before we sure. move on? Yes, this, this all right. Go ahead, First but, Lady. Me and Sister Joan, we have so much in common because um, <laughs> like, what she was when you was sharing when you were sharing that from your childhood, it reminded me of how it's it's something I didn't I don't think about that often, but conversations like this brings it back to my mind mm -hmm. because when I was young, I was always teased for being such a happy-go-lucky kid and always being so silly. I had such a silly y'all get to see the silly side of me sometimes, <laughs> but it took me a long time to be myself because when I was a kid. I was, you know, shamed for it and ridiculed for it. And because I was always cracking jokes and always just so happy, um, my family members, my sisters, cousins, everybody that I could think of would call me, they would call me retarded. They would call me slow. Wow. And they would call me, they would call me that name so much that it almost became like a nickname. And I started to believe it after a while and to kind of combat that, to hide it. I wouldn't joke around as much and I wouldn't smile. I would be serious. Mm -hmm. And I, and it was a coping mechanism for me. So then fast forward 15 years old, I meet the person that I'm going to be abused by and manipulated and controlled by. So of course now I really, I'm not smiling, you know, because of the situation that I'm in. And he would tell me I couldn't smile at people because if I smiled, I was being flirtatious. Right. And so all of those things started to have an effect on me. So imagine going like a span of 10, 15 years being um, being told not to smile or indirectly told not to smile. So as a, in my early 20s or in my mid 20s to now, I've had to literally force myself, not force myself, but train myself to smile and not look so serious because mm -hmm. then after a while I stopped realizing, I didn't know that I was I had such a stern, serious look until people would say, oh, you're intimidating or you seem like you're stuck up. And I'd be like, look, who, me? <laughs> and, and, and but then I realized because I wasn't smiling a lot. And so then now fast forward to now, apostles always reminded me, smile, chick. He'll, you know, always tease yeah. me throughout the day. Smile, yeah. you know, don't let me get old before you. And, you know, he'll say yeah. stuff. So I have this sign in my office that says smiling is good for the soul. And so I told him the other day, it was probably about two days ago. 
I said, you know how I go outside and I do my morning walks and I'm trying to stay physically fit. I said to stay emotionally fit when I, when I walk, I'm going to make sure that I walk and I'm exercising my face by smiling. <laughs> so I said, as I'm walking, I'm going to also smile because just like I'm